This episode of the Capital G Show has been brought to you by the Titanfall lore. The critically acclaimed FPS that's good enough to cure cancer and make me buy an X-Bone is now in lore form. If you want to be entertained for 60 seconds, the link is in the description. What's up YouTube? Capital G here. Have a really, really good duel that I recorded yesterday. We've got Duelist Grounds Goats at the top, 1658, and Team Shabba at the bottom, 1825 rating. So, pretty legit. This duel was just, it was something to behold. I'd never seen anything like it. Anyways, Team Shaba got game one, so you're watching game two. Duelist Grounds Goats opens with gear frame, and then he starts cannon, which kind of made me scratch my head, but then he traded it in for two new cards and then played upside on top of that. So he's already drawn three cards into his deck and uh, took one away from his deck. So he's just blowing through his deck, and I guess he's looking for, you know, his side deck cards and stuff like that. Team Shaba hits him with a blind fire MST hitting Light Imprisoning Mirror, which is good because he's playing Thunder Family, and you definitely don't want to have to deal with that card. And then he blind fires another MST. Uh, Dual Scrum Goats flips over his Forbidden Lance, but he doesn't want to chain it, so it really wouldn't make sense to chain it. Team Shaba sets three cards in his back row, and I'm kind of surprised. It's like you double MST, but then you don't have a follow-up play. That's kind of weird. Anyways, um, Dual Scrum Goats just hits him for 1800 and I guess Team Shab is saying, you know, it really wasn't about, you know, uh, MSCing your cards. It's making sure you couldn't MSC my cards. I wanted to get my protection set up. And Dual Ground Goats is going to set two cards in his back row. So he puts a little protection there himself. Team Shab sets one and passes back. And Dual Ground Goats is, seems, I mean, he seems to just be content hitting him for 1800. And I would too. I wouldn't summon anything. I wouldn't do anything until you answered the gear frame. And um, the upstart that he played is now irrelevant because, I mean, he's done 36 just with the gear frame alone. He summons Gimmick Puppet Scissor Arms. Uh, that's the Armageddon one, if you don't know. It's basically like Armageddon Knight for the deck. It dumps a Gimmick Puppet monster into the graveyard, but Team Shabba hits him with Torrential Tribute. And, you know, you could say he got a little greedy there, even though this is a trigger effect that will still activate. He's going to dump um, the Puppet Doll into the graveyard. And basically, Puppet Doll is the one where you banish another gimmick puppet monster and then you can summon her. She doesn't have any stats, so you wouldn't summon her in attack mode. She's really just to make Xyz. And since she's um, level 8, then you can trade her in also. So I understand why you want to trade in. Now, Team Shabba throws down Ma and Paw Thunder, attacking for 27. And now he's going to go into an XC play. And I was kind of wondering what he was going to do, but then he summons Crazy Box, and I was like, uh-oh, shit's getting real. <laughs> he triggers the effect, and then he chains Deck Devastation Virus on top, and I was like, yo, this shit is getting hype. <laughs> because our Deck Devastation Virus is a card you rarely see in an all-light deck, right? Like, that's crazy. So his opponent has to discard Black Salvo. He discards the Magnet Doll. The Magnet Doll is the one where if you control nothing but gimmick puppet monsters, you can special summon it from your hand. It has to be at least one monster. And, I mean, once again, uh, you don't really play it because of the stats. You play it because you can trade it in and because it makes uh, rank 8 exceeds. So, you know, you can make shit like um, Felgrand. I mean, everybody knows Felgrand's pretty much a beast. This format is the format that kind of put Felgrand on, in my opinion. So, they're both in pretty interesting positions. Now, here's the thing. Uh, the, um, the crazy box is going to trigger because you know he did he did chain the deck devastation virus he ends up rolling a one so he, he has to cut his life points in half <laughs> so he ends up taking 2700 and that unfortunately sucks he draws another copy of the um the gimmick puppet doll and since it has zero attack and defense it goes to the graveyard and now looking at it it's like deck devastation virus is pretty much the nuts versus his deck because all of these gimmick puppet monsters you know they have really really high um levels but their 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 stats are really low you know what i mean they're like a thousand and shit like that so anyways he triggers the puppet doll by removing um another copy by removing another gimmick monster or a gimmick puppet monster and then he's trying to play junk puppet which basically just summons one of your gimmick puppets from the uh from the graveyard in attack or defense mode whatever <clears throat> and i'm guessing that he really just wants to go to an xc and then he kind of he pulls that back and he's like hold on hold on hold on wait wait i want to try something else first he's like he's like stop 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 think about my move he drops dark on dragon because he has three darks in his graveyard and i'm like okay it's legit but unfortunately it falls into a, a black corner of heaven one of the best cards in the entire format. So you'd expect him basically to just follow up with the Jump Puppet and go back to his original play of, you know, potentially making a Felgrand or a Heliopolis or something like that. I mean, right now, he really could go into Heliopolis. 
he could blow up his two face downs, uh, kill his opponent's two face downs, and he could basically make the Thunder Family deck top deck against, you know, a Heliopolis, and that's really, really, really not a good look because it's very difficult for that deck to, to, to counter it. I mean, really, you just have, like, 101, and, you know, I guess you could use something like... Um, Diamond Direwolf or some shit like that, but I mean all of those require basically they all require two cards You know what I mean? So unless he top decks like recycling batteries or some shit like that I mean he's pretty much in a shitty position or he can go into Felgrand and he can know that if those are two reactive traps like Mirror Force Deep Prison that you know He can just try negating them if you know they happen to be a dark hole or some shit like that He can just keep putting protection on his Felgrand and at least eat those two cards up and still have a 2800 beater on board not to mention, if his opponent does top deck something like a Sis Thunder, you know, the one that banishes, you know, Thunder Monsters and then lets you add them to the hand, he can negate that shit too. So, you know, Felgrand is pretty much a beast here. Heliopolis is a little riskier, but it can clear the board. And, um, I mean, Deck Devastation is putting in, it's doing some damage here, but he's not in a bad position. Unless his opponent has like a Warning or a Black Horn of Heaven, then he's just fucked, so... This is an interesting deck. I mean, this guy had a little bit of everything up in this bitch. And, uh, yeah. He summons, let's read this, the Gimmick Puppet of Strings. And I vaguely remember this card, and I was like, I'm trying to remember. This is the one that places string counters on face-up monsters. And I'm like, why did he summon this? Because his opponent doesn't have any face-up monsters. I mean, the stats are super legit. Don't get me wrong, but it just seems like Felgrand would have been a better card. And I'm thinking, okay, well, maybe he has something set that you know it aids gimmick puppet exceeds or it aids gimmick puppet monsters something like that you know what i mean otherwise i don't know why you would play this over playing heliopolis or playing something like um felgrand obviously because you know he could evac this or some shit like that now i guess he waited to see if he was going to do something and then he activates rank up argent Chaos Force, and I was like, oh shit, <laughs> it's, about to be, it's about to get fucking real. Now, I don't know, truth be told, I don't know a ton about Chaos Monsters, about the Chaos Exceeds, but I do know Rank Up, um, the Rank Up Chaos Force is a really, really good card. I just know Rank Up in general is legit because anytime you activate that card, you bring out some really, really fucking OP Exceed Monster, and I was like, I gotta read this guy because I've never seen him before. He is Chaos Exceed Coach Lord Ultimate Trainer. And I was like, let's look at that effect. First thing I noticed, this motherfucker requires four level nine monsters. It says it cannot be targeted by card effects, period. So basically, he's Leo. And it says that if it has an Exceed monster as an Exceed material, which it does, it gains the following effect. Once per turn, you can detach an Exceed material from the card, draw one card, you get to reveal it, and if it's a monster, inflict 800 damage. So this motherfucker is super, super legit. The card art isn't great, but I was just like, wow. So if you have D-Prison or you have Lance or some shit like that, you are super, super salty. Not to mention... One of the best counters in a deck like Thunder Family is using 101, and you can't 101 it, and you're only at 2,700, so if this motherfucking attack goes through, you are done, brother. So I was just like, wow, that is the first time I've ever seen somebody summon, uh, you know, a Chaos Exceed monster in a competitive game. So he attacks, his opponent activates Call of the Haunted, and I'm like, oh, Lord, don't you have nothing but those little fucking Thunder Monsters? And I'm like, oh, okay, okay, you're safe. You're safe for one turn. You've got Crazy Box in there. And I'm like, you know you know you're in a bad spot when you have to activate Call of the Haunted to get back an XC monster just so you don't lose. <laughs> because if he would have got back either the Thunder Family Monsters, he just would have straight lost. So his opponent dropped a fucking rank 9 monster. I've never seen that. And then he just, Team Shaba just decides to scoop it up. He's like... I can't come back from that shit, so. He has recycling batteries, but, I mean, that, that he just can't kill it. I mean, you know, Diamond Dire Wolf and, you know, none of those cards can fucking kill it. And he couldn't use, he couldn't use something like, um, what do you call that guy? I don't think he could have used Exiton Knight because I believe they had the same amount of cards, so that that's no good either. So they're siding it up, and um, it looks like Team Shadow will probably be going first. And I went into the Watcher chat immediately, and I was like, yo, I wanted to see what people were saying about that fucking rank up. Because, yeah, you see people say Summon Felgrand, and that's what I was thinking. But, you know, this is the first time I've ever seen a Chaos Monster Summon, so I'm a little hype. And, um... I don't know if you guys have ever seen like some of Galactic God's old videos, his dual videos. Whenever he was about to like try to summon Quasar, he'd always be like, uh, "Time to rev it up." And I thought that was like the most hype shit ever. I think anytime you activate Rank Up 
you should be required to say time to rev it up <laughs> because it's just it's just like something epic is about to fucking come out something that you never see in duels you know all of these chaos monsters are incredibly powerful they're not the easiest things to summon obviously but they're all incredibly incredibly strong i've actually seen um silent honor are uh the 101s i've seen his chaos form and that motherfucker is real so let's see team shop is going first um once again, we have Thunder Family at the bottom, and we have, I guess you could call it Rank Up Gadget, I mean, Rank Up Machina, the Gimmick Puppet, I mean, I don't even know what to call it that. So he plays My Thunder, then he plays um, Watt Giraffe, which is, uh, it's pretty legit once you get it off. He goes into Bujin Yumi. he's going to discard Pop Thunder, and he draws two cards. And this is a really good play, um, especially just, well, he plays Upstart first before ending. Sets three cards. This is a really good play because um, not only does Tsukiyomi have uh, 2,300 defense, but it comes out in defense most of the time. So you can't 101 it. And you get to just draw two cards. So you can draw into your side deck cards and shit like that. It's just a way to kind of speed your deck up. His opponent fires back with Upstart Goblin. And then he tries to go into Gear Frame. And we saw how Gear Frame got his deck started last time. It got him, you know, um, it got him cannon. He traded it in for more cards. But he's hit with Phoenix Chain, unfortunately. His opponent summons, that's my Thunder, and then Sis Thunder. Sis Thunder is like the, the, the best one. <laughs> Sis Thunder removes Watt, uh, Watt Giraffe, so that will go back to his hand during the end phase. And then he plays Thunder Seahorse, and he gets two copies of uh, something. No, I'm sorry, he didn't play Thunder Seahorse. He discarded the Thunder Seahorse for Tsukiyumi's effect. Then he drew Upstart Goblin and another card, and then he played Upstart Goblin. My mistake. So you're seeing that he's going to go into a rank 4 at C, and I'm kind of wondering what he's going to go into. He goes into uh, Steel Storm Roach, which, I mean, did, does anybody even know? I, like, I, I fucking forgot that card existed. I mean, didn't you? Like, outside of Heretic Rulers, what the fuck are you using that card on? So I was like, what? He, uh, people still run Roach? So he attacks over the uh, gear frame with um, Roach, and then he attacks for uh, 1800 with Tsukiyomi, and then he puts the... Um, the Watt Giraffe back in his hand. And Watt Giraffe is such a legit card, especially if you summon it off one of the Thunder Monsters, because you can attack with Watt Giraffe, and then whatever it see you go to summon, your opponent can't use anything for the rest of the turn. So they can't Phoenix Chain it, they can't do shit. It's really good if you want to use Exiton Knight during main phase two or something like that, because your opponent's field is just, I mean, you're at their mercy. You can't Valor, you can't use anything. And believe me, in my Bujin deck, I have been salty as fuck trying to kill that card or trying to deal with that card because way too many times my opponent will 101 my monster when I have turtle in the graveyard but I can't use it so anyways those grounds goats um, summons one of his gimmick puppet monsters once again this is the Armageddon one that dumps a monster into the graveyard he dumps shadow feeler into the graveyard I believe he said earlier in the, in, earlier in the game that this is battle fader basically from the graveyard it's very similar he attacks um, still storm roach he's trying to go to damage step and you just have to assume that he has uh, a, a Forbidden Lance or something like that. If not, I just, I'm like, what is he doing? Because he can't really go, he can't do any of his plays as long as that Roach is on the field. Tsukiyumi, I mean, I don't really think that he cares too much about that. So he plays the Lance on Still Storm Roach, uh, as we expected. And Roach is going to go down. He takes 100 life points. I would still say um, Team Shaba has the advantage Strictly because, A, he still has a bigger monster on board, although that could change because you see that um, he drops Gimmick Puppet Magnet Doll. This is the one where, again, you have to uh, control nothing but um, Gimmick Puppet Monsters, and correct me if I'm wrong, but he just dropped two of those motherfuckers. So now it looks like he's going into a rank 8 play here, and you'd have to imagine Felgrand would be the play, and Felgrand is the play here. And if he gets the Felgrand off, I would probably say that he's at advantage now. His opponent plays Duality, he sees Black Horn of Heaven, and uh, he puts Ma Thunder and Thunder Seahorse back. And you just, you have to imagine Black Horn of Heaven is going to be the best card in this matchup, simply because, um, I mean, uh, this deck wins through it seeing. Now, here's here's where you have to think about this. He plays Watt Giraffe, and again, Watt Giraffe, once it attacks directly for that 1200, it locks you out of any effects you can use. Now, if it was me here... I would have actually used Felgrand and I would have negated the Watt Giraffe because you have to think if he has something like Evac, you could be in a shitstorm and I mean speak of the devil and the devil shall appear and that's exactly what he had. Evac is really the only way I could have seen him getting around that. That's why I, I read an Evac 
and he ends up losing his failed variant. I mean, he trades in his uh, his ghost trick. His now, why did I say ghost trick? He trades in his gimmick puppet doll for two more cards. The problem is he only has three cards in his hand. Even if he can somehow get out another rank eight XC, all his opponent's gonna do is just black one having it. I mean, he already knows that he has it. So he summons the same exact one um, that he just had on field. Once again, this is the one that has the uh, Armageddon Knight effect. And I guess he's just trying to dump a bunch of dolls into the graveyard so that he can bait out the um, so that he can bait out the Black Horn of Heaven. Actually, looking at the way that his deck is constructed, I think he should have ran something like Royal Decree. <clears throat> so he clashes with Watt Giraffe, just wanting to get that off the board. Watt Giraffe is a really, really, really good fucking card if you run a lot of traps. I'm telling you what, guys. All right, so he plays uh, Sis Thunder, and I imagine he's just going to banish. Oh, nope, he banishes the uh, the Pot Thunder, and he's just going to attack for, what is that, uh, 2,800? He doesn't, or he can't do the full damage because he summons his, um, his gimmick Puppet Monster. Again, that's kind of like the Battle Fader one. I... Don't know if it has to go in attack or defense. He summons it in attack, I guess not wanting to eat the um, the 900, but it looks like you have to take like a 1,000 life points. <clears throat> so he summons uh, Gimmick Puppet. I couldn't even read the name he did the play so fast. I'm just going to assume it copies rank 8. So the problem is, I mean, you don't really want to summon your best card right here unless he runs multiple fail grands because you know whatever the fuck you summon is going to fall into a black horn of heaven. So... This is why, I mean, Light Imprisoning Mirror is good, but I definitely would have sided in three decrees uh, without question. Either three decrees or um, I would have I would have probably sided in some Malcats, some Malevolent Catastrophes, because it's already been shown that this dude loads up on back row. I mean, in game two, he had five fucking back row set. So he summons the, um, the Sliven one, the one that, like, blows up monsters and shit like that, but it falls into a black corner of heaven. And you see now he's going to start trying to use his um, his gimmick puppet dolls, just banishing his monsters. I mean, she's kind of like the Mizuki of the deck, basically. As long as you can keep a bunch of ghost... Uh, I keep saying ghost trick. As long as you can keep a bunch of um, puppets in the graveyard, I mean, you can just kind of keep you know summoning her and shit like that. So this time he goes for another rank 8 play after using his um, the spell that lets you summon from the graveyard, but he falls into another Black Horn of Heaven, and I was just like, fuck, I mean, if somebody has double Black Horn of Heaven, there's not a lot you can do against that, unless you just have, you know what, I can't even think of anything like that, unless you have seven tools of the bandit, which not a lot of people play, there's not a lot you're going to be able to do, so he summons Pot Thunder, Pot Thunder triggers, which summons Ma Thunder, and then he summons Sis Thunder on top of that, Sis Thunder activates. Um, that's gonna remove Watt Giraffe. Sis Thunder seems to be the best one because you just you just keep banishing shit and just adding it to his hand. It looks like he's going for a rank four play, and then I was like, wait, why don't you make Ouroboros? Like Ouroboros is like by far the best card here because what if that happens to be Battle Fader or Swift Scarecrow or some shit? So he plays Ouroboros, which to be honest, it seems very very easy to drop in this deck, and um, Ouroboros is gonna trigger. That's going to send the one card in his hand to the graveyard. And from that point, it looks like he'll just be able to attack for game. Ouroboros is going to attack for 2750. He's going to eat the 2750. Um, he does try and trigger the um, the Ghost Trick Monster, the one that's like Battle Fader. Yeah, I guess it still has I guess it has to be summoned in attack mode, which sucks. But unfortunately for him, his opponent can just ram Tsukiyumi into it for game. So. Let me know what you guys think. I thought that was a highly entertaining duel. We saw Crazy Box, DDV. We saw Ouroboros. We saw Rank Up XC plays. We saw trade-ins on cannons. I liked it a lot. Thank you guys for watching.